My name is Miracle. This is another pronunciation workshop. We will be doing some reading. It really depends on which students come to class, what we will be doing. Um, if it is a beginner level student, then we will work on just a few sentences. If they are more advanced, more um, familiar with English sounds and reading, then we can do full articles. So it really depends on the students who come in. I am okay, I'm going to share my screen and go ahead and get started with an article. So here we go, and if someone comes in, then I may have to adjust when they come in. Okay, video of the week. World record for supersized Pong played on Philadelphia skyscraper. Playing video games on a handheld console is fun. But wouldn't it be even more so on the wall on the wall of a giant 29-story skyscraper with thousands of people joining in? That's exactly what Drexel University's professor Frank Lee had in mind when he organized the grandest game of Pong on the planet to kick off Philadelphia's Tech Week earlier this year. While the gaming event took place over two days on April 19th and April 24th was a big success. Wait a minute. While the gaming event that took place over two days on April 19th and April 24th was a big, big success, it took the folks at Guinness Book of World Records a few months to verify if it was the biggest ever played. On November 15, 2013, they finally declared it, would, it to be the largest architectural video game display in the world. This recognition is particularly gratifying given, given that it took the professor, who is also the director of the school's game development program, five years to fulfill his dream. Mr. Lee says that he first thought of the idea whilst driving by the beautiful building in 2008 when for some reason the sparkling lights flickering around made him think of early video games like Tetris and Pong. But it was not until 2013 that he was able to convince the building and city officials and transform the 430-foot-tall wall into a 60,000-square-foot screen with thousands of embedded LED lights replicating the familiar balls and paddles, all controlled by a joystick that was situ situated a mile away. In case you are wondering, Pong is the first successful commercial video game to ever come to market. Introduced by Atari about 41 years ago, it, mark, it marked the beginning of today's multi-billion dollar gaming industry as well as the billions of obsessed video game fans. I'm going to mute it, but let's see. Let's see if we can see people actually playing the video game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's awesome. That is really awesome. They were playing Pong on a building. That's incredible. That's really incredible. Oh my goodness. That is truly incredible. I love it. Huh. Okay, well, let's stop there. That looks like the end of that article. That was great. Okay, it only took five minutes to read that. Let's find another one. 
international. Oh, there's some turkeys, just in case you guys did not know. Today is Thanksgiving Day in the United States. It's a day where we are supposed to be thankful. Um, some people say, you know, we should not have a day where we are reminded to be thankful. We should be thankful every day. But it is a huge holiday in the U.S. Um, people eat a lot. They buy a lot. It's the second biggest holiday to Christmas. It is a huge holiday here. So, uh, let's see. I wanted to read this one. I was looking at it a long time ago. Playing with food has never looked so good. Is that food? That is not food! <clears throat> oh my god, that's sugar! Playing with food has never looked so good. Look, this is sugar! Oh my god! A mosaic of a tea picker, a wild flower meadow, and a working camera all made from sugar were just some of the extraordinary sights in store for the thousands of people fortunate enough to attend the annual Experimental Food Society Spectacular held on November 8th and 9th at London's Truman Brewery. That is one of the hardest words in English to say. Brewery. 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 It's a difficult word. Brew worry. Brewery. Wow. But this is gorgeous. This is made out of sugar. Incredible. Is that Mandela? Who is that? Now in its fourth year, the event is the brainchild of Alexa Perrin, who is trying to change people's perception of food from something they just follow to something they admire as an art form. Each year she invites some of England's finest food artists ranging from butter sculptors to experimental confectioners. Confectioner is someone who works with sugar and even food landscape artists to demonstrate their artistic skills by playing with their food. That's just nasty. Who would eat that? Okay, that's disgusting. Ugh. Oh my god. The results, as you can see from this chocolate snail made by British confectioner's boy eats bug, can range from a little slimy and unappetizing. Okay, so disgusting is another way of saying unappetizing. Except this is a better word than disgusting. But either way, you, who would eat that? Like, you would have to be starving to eat that. That is so gross. Anyway, and unappetizing to just plain magical like the glow-in-the-dark ice cream cone below. Created by food inventor Charlie Harry Francis, its secret ingredient is calcium-activated luminescence jellyfish protein. That's weird. Oh, that's nasty. What in the world are y'all doing? Created by food inventor Charlie Harry Francis, its secret ingredient is calcium-activated luminescent, luminescence jellyfish protein that lights up when someone agitates it by taking a lick. But who would eat that? That's disgusting. But magic like this does not come cheap. It cost Francis $140 to create this one scoop, which means that the ice cream is not coming to a store near you anytime soon. <laughs> oh, wow. Then there was this gorgeous cocktail glass made by Fernando Lapos. <gasps> Look how beautiful that is! Oh my gosh! Artist and sugar blower extraordinaire. The glass, as you may have guessed, doubles up as a drink holder and dessert. For after the drink is gone, it can be savored one sweet bite at a time. The glass is sugar. 
How awesome is that? Okay, what is that? While this life-sized model of a chicken created by Kyle Bean using just eggshell eggshells is definitely not edible, it sure is cute to look at. That is adorable. How cute is that? As for this amazing rendition of the city of Venice, <clears throat> though it may look like a beautiful oil painting, it is actually made from the Lego of the food, food world, pasta, by photographer and food landscape artist Carl Warner. Playing with food is not all that bad, is it? This is made out of pasta? Huh. Wow. Let's see. Yeah, that's sugar blowing in the wind. You guys can't see, you can't hear what she's saying. But I wanted to see if we could catch any more. Look at that. Okay, let's see what she's saying. Oh my god. Those were ovens. Those were ovens with cakes made out of food. What is this? It's some sort of steam tea. You, instead of drinking the tea, you inhale it and you can taste it when you inhale it. Okay, let's see what else they have. The red one's actually an apple flavor and the green one's actually a raspberry flavor. The reason we switched it around is just they've got the opposite flavor and fun to try. We have um, two different colored jellies. They've got the opposite flavor of what you'd expect. The red one's actually an apple flavor and the green one's actually a raspberry flavor. The reason we switched it around is just to um, see whether or not your sight is more important um, in determining the taste than your taste is and which one overrides the other. So my name's Louise Floor and I work as a perfumer, but I also run a supper club called the Frame. Okay, that is just extremely fascinating. If you guys are interested in the video, uh, the actual video, you can see it here. Or you can do a, whoops, whoops, you can do a YouTube search for Spectacular Exhibition 2013 EFS. So I'll put the link here for you if you're interested in that. That was super cool. Okay, let's see what other articles we have here. I had been looking at that one for a long time. Okay, let's see, social studies. This is interesting, especially since we love languages so much. Here we go. Researchers reveal the one word that can be understood almost universally. <laughs> what is the one word that you can speak in almost any country in the world and be understood? If your response to that is, huh, you are absolutely right. This three-letter word that we often use to express our confusion or unclearness And this sentence is not good. This three-letter word that we often use to express. Okay. This three-letter word that we often use to express our confusion or unclearness. Uh, this. Th this should not be there. Okay, this three-letter word that we often use to express our confusion is apparently used in almost the same form all the way from Ghana to Laos and even Iceland. 
This revelation that was published on November 8th in the scientific journal PLOS1 was made by a team of researchers from Netherlands-based Max Planck Institute, Mark Dingemans, Francisco Torreiro, Torreira and Nick Enfield, who are currently conducting a major cross-linguistic study funded by the European Research Council, recorded and listened to 20 informal conversations in 10 different languages. When they discovered that huh appears in some form in all of them, they performed a cursory study of 21 other languages, which also showed the same trend. What was even more surprising was that many, like Siwu spoken in Ghana, Chapala, Chapala, ooh, is that right? Chapala, spoken in Ecuador, and Murnipata, spoken by some Australian Aborigines, were not even mainstream languages. Ha, he, e, e, al, al. Ah, oh, that's cute! Oh, I love this! This is fantastic! Oh my god! I love it! And while most of us don't think of ha huh as a real vocabulary word, the researchers insist it is. That's because it has to be learned. Uh, this is a British author because they wrote learnt um, and in English we say and you can see it here you can see it here this is from the UK we say learned l-e-a-r-n-e-d anyway it's pronounced basically the same way and has the same meaning so this is past tense in English but it's British English that's because it has to be learned in slightly different forms in each language in English it is of course huh in Mandarin Chinese and Lao, it's all. Oh, I don't know how to. All, oh, all. Oh. Okay. In Spanish, it's e, eh? and the list goes on. And while spelled again British, spelled slightly differently, it is pronounced in almost the same manner, and more importantly, means the same thing puzzlement or confusion. So, how did ha huh become such a universal word? The linguists believe that when humans are unable to respond appropriately to anything that is said, they look for a quick way out. A word like ha huh? is quick to say when nothing else comes to mind. And since humans, no matter what language they speak, are inherently the same, they ended up with a similar solution by using minimum letters to pronounce questioning syllables like ha, huh? a, uh, e, eh? etc. So the next time someone asks you how many languages you speak, you can answer multiple and while they that may be stretching the truth a little, you would definitely not be lying. Interesting. Here's a video. <laughs> they they're saying the word huh and uh as it lights up on the screen they are letting you hear people from other countries pronounce it That is awesome. Okay, so how can I? I definitely need to. Uh, let me see. How can I share this? What?
is her universal is ha a universal word you decide let's just go ahead and share that one that is awesome I love it all right let's see what else we have entertainment oh Lord if they try to give me some kind of article about Britney Spears I'm so gone I don't know what that means. I have no idea what that means, but let's find out. Video of the week. Video of the week, Florida man joggles Quad Cities Marathon. I have no idea what that means. Is he jogging backward? Oh my God. He is jogging and juggling seriously dude <sighs> completing a 26.2 mile marathon is hard enough now imagine running it backwards not impressed how about doing all that and juggling or as they call it joggling that believe it or not is what Joe Salter did on the weekend of September 19th at the Quad Cities Marathon in Moline, Illinois. The Florida resident who completed the event in an impressive 5 hours, 51 minutes and 25 seconds was hoping to set a new Guinness World Record for his feet. However, in order to qualify, every minute of the event had to be recorded and since that is not allowed during some portions of the race, he was unable to stake his claim. This is not the first time Joe has brought his juggling skills to an already challenging event. In April 2012, he became the first person in the world to juggle through a triathlon. You know, let's just say ridiculous. Let's just call it what it is. That's just ridiculous. And if you think he has started a new trend, think again. Joggling, as it turns out, is already a competitive sport, complete with it with its own world championships. Who would have guessed? Good grief. Are you serious? Okay, good. That YouTube account has been closed. Let's see what he's doing. And why did I say er? I'm not sure why I said er are you serious? I'm not sure. What is he doing? What is he doing? Seriously? This is ridiculous. Oh, this is so stupid. This is the stupidest thing. You know, I have to stop this video. I cannot handle this anymore. Okay, that's over. Okay, um, that is just the dumbest thing ever. Th that is dumb. Okay, so we now know what joggling is. Um, it is running backwards. And while you are jogging, sorry, not running, but jogging backwards and juggling at the same time. Yeah, okay. Oh, wow. No, I don't need to see that. Let's see. Um... I know that many of you are aware that two weeks ago there was a typhoon that hit the Philippines. I had not read anything about it or looked at the articles. I did not want to 
be too sad. I mean, it was just horrible. Um, but I did not keep track of it. I know that the numbers rose and rose in terms of the, the death toll or the number of people who died. It was just very sad. Let me see what the typhoon Philippines. Okay. They are still doing, uh, I want to say, recovery and cleanup. Um, I don't know how many people. Oh my God. There are the numbers. 5,235 people were killed. 5,000 people. That is so sad. Okay, so let's read this article. It's going to be a lot simpler. Make sure no one has come to class. Okay, here we go. This is a picture of the type typhoon wiping out a structure. The residents of Philippines are no strangers. I think we normally say the Philippines because it's a group of islands. Um, the residents of the Philippines are no strangers to typhoons. After all, an average of 19 storms brush by each year with at least six or seven making landfall. However, Super Typhoon Haiyan or Yolanda, as the locals are calling it, that landed around 4 a.m. local time on Friday, November 8, 2013, was no ordinary storm. So this was exactly 20 days ago. We estimated, with estimated sustained winds of 200 miles per hour and gusts rising as high as 235 miles per hour, experts believe that it may have been the biggest typhoon to ever make landfall. To put it in perspective, it was 3.5 times more powerful than Hurricane Katrina. Oh my God. The third largest, the third strongest storm to hit the U.S. mainland, or as experts succinct, succinct, succinctly put it, succinctly, this is not using the same rule as, um, usually with two C's, you have a K and then an S sound, so like success, but this is succinctly, this is a different pattern. Um, the strongest storm to hit the U.S. mainland, or as experts succinctly put it, as strong as a storm could theoretically get. While the winds were bad enough, what was devastating and totally unexpected was the storm surge that reached up to 20 feet high in some coastal cities. My goodness. Though the extent of the damage is still being assessed, one thing is for sure, for sure, the trail of devastation left by Haiyan is like none other experienced by this country before. As of today, about 1,800 people are believed to have lost their lives, and the number could rise as high as 5,000. An estimated 580,000 people have been displaced about half of which are currently living in the over 900 evacuation centers set up by the government. Amongst the worst hit is Tacloban, the coastal capital of the Leyte province, which was leveled by the surging waters, leaving many of its 200,000 residents without homes, food, or water. The city's only hospi hospital is so cramped that doctors are unable to accept any more patients. Also devastated is Basie, a seaside town in Samar province that lies across the bay from Tacloban, where 433 people are believed to have perished, and many remain unaccounted for. These cities, however, are amongst the fortunate ones. That's because their residents have begun receiving aid in the form of food, water, and even mobile hospitals from countries all over the world. My 
goodness. Wow. Such is not the case for the, for the 40,000 residents of Kayan, which aerial surveys show has also been devastated by Haiyan. That's because the city is located in a remote region of the country, one which has been difficult to access because many roads remain blocked. Also, with the electricity out in most of the affected regions, aid workers can only operate during the day. To make matters worse, a new tropical storm, Zoraida, made landfall on Tuesday morning. Though not very strong, it managed to slow down rescue and aid missions because flights to the remote areas had to be suspended until the storm passed. The only silver lining was that the storm, which so far is estimated to have caused about $14 billion in damages, skirted past Manila, the country's main industrial and economic hub. The good news is that storms of this strength are more the exception than the rule. According to scientists, ones with such intensity occur only about once in a decade, and even better, make landfall maybe once every 100 years. Phew. Phew is, phew, it's like that. Phew, it's uh, just a sigh of relief. It's like saying thank goodness, but instead of saying thank goodness, you just make the sound. Phew. Okay. Oh, look at that. Typhoons, hurricanes, cyclones. I am here. I'm in this region here. If you could... <laughs> I'm sorry. If you can see my... um arrow. So we get hurricanes. That's what we get. We get hurricanes. Um, this is South America. This is Africa. And you can see that is really interesting to see the, um, the patterns. So they get typhoons. Wow, typhoons here. Cyclone, good grief. I, I've never heard of a cyclone being reported. I've heard of typhoons and hurricanes. But uh, cyclones, I, I don't even know what that is, really. I mean, I know it involves water and wind, but how it's different from a, a, a typhoon, I have no idea. Wow. Oh, look at this. While called different names, they are all one and the same. <clears throat> In the northern hemisphere, north of the equator, they are called hurricanes or typhoons. Hurricanes or typhoons. Okay. While in the southern hemisphere, south of the equator, they are called cyclones. Oh, I didn't know that. How do they form? Air flows upwardly from the center in the cooler upper levels of the storm. The warm, humid air rises rapidly in the thunderstorm, updrafts near the center. Wow. There's the, the infamous eye of the storm. What's near the surface carry warmth? Winds near the surface carry warm, moist air in towards the storm center. Typhoons, hurricanes, cyclones are large revolving tropical storms caused by winds blowing around a central area of low atmospheric pressure. They develop under warm waters, that's why hurricanes in Florida always happen in the summer. Whoops. Always happen in the summer because the warmth creates low pressure air. The rapidly rising air becomes saturated with moisture and forms thunderclouds. 
Cool air fills up the empty space created by the warm air that has risen. Because the Earth is constantly spinning on its axis, it causes the warm air to start rotating faster and faster and becoming bigger in diameter, often extending out thousands of kilometers. As it gains speed and strength, it moves and sometimes ends up hitting land masses. Wow, my goodness. Why was Haiyan particularly deadly? Experts believe that there were a number of factors that combined to make Haiyan or Yolanda the perfect deadly storm. First was the fact that it skimmed across the Pacific so rapidly that it did not have time to suck in any cool air, which would have helped reduce its energy level and hence impact. Then there was its unusual path. With the high pressure to the north and the... Oops... With the high pressure to the north, the storm happened to track further south, which is why it hit the central part of the country rather than the north that is subjected to most typhoon activity and whose residents know how to deal know how to deal with such storms. To make matters worse let's see something is happening. With the high pressure to the north, the storm happened to track further south, which is why it hit the central part of the country rather than the north that is subjected to most typhoon activity and whose residents know how to deal with such storms. This is a really long sentence and I'm trying to um, understand what they're saying here. Okay. Oh, I see. What they're saying is that it hit, um, it hit the south, not the north. It would have been different if it had hit the north because in the north they receive more typhoons and they know how to deal with the storms. But in the south, ah, in the south you're not as familiar. To make matters worse, the naturally funnel-shaped Taglopan Bay helped fuel the surge and turned into, this is not written well, should say and turned it into an almost 20 foot high wall of water which experts believe is responsible for, it should say, the majority of the damage. Wow. That is so interesting. Wow. Hello. Hello. Oh my gosh, I didn't see you guys come to class. Uh, if you come to class and I don't say something, since my screen is not open, you should speak. So who was here? I don't know. Who came in first? Uh, me, actually. Hi, my name is Mert. I'm from Turkey. Hi, Mert. You should say something. I didn't <laughs> see you. Actually, Usually... I don't want to disturb you. Oh, it's okay. You because you need to be reading, not me. <laughs> okay. You okay. need to be reading. Um, okay. but normally it makes a little ding sound, and it didn't do that. Oh, okay. Didn't do that. Ahmad, hello. Hi, hi, teacher. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I am fine. Am I saying your name properly, Ahmad? Yes. Okay, My name great. Is Ahmed. Where are you from? I am from in Kuwait. Kuwait. Very nice. Yes. Matt, how about to you both? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, guys, let's get you reading. Um, actually, I think this article is over. Yeah, this article is done. I am done, uh, see, for, I am sorry, teacher. You what? I am done, see, uh, for you. I am listening, I am see this picture. I don't see uh, you. You don't see me? Yeah. Mert, do you see me? Yes, while you are talking, I see you. Do I have on glasses? Yeah. 
Yeah, I see me. Um, I'm not sure. Let me turn it off and turn it back on. Hold on. Off and on. Okay. Ahmad, it's back on. Do back you see on? me? No, I don't see. I think I maybe there's a problem with your connection or, or something because I, I see me and Mert sees me as well. I am going uh, hang ups. Hang oh. ups. Okay. All right, let's do this. A student sent me, uh, let's see. Mm, a student sent me some information uh, about yoga, and I have this page open. Why don't we read this? Um, let's see. Ahmed, can you see my computer screen? No, I don't see. I am see picture. Yeah, there's something wrong with your connection. You might want to contact um, support at colingo.com because there's something wrong. So, whoops, I'm sorry, that's not correct. There you go. Support yeah. at colingo.com, okay? Because you should be able to see my screen. Uh, let me give you... Okay. Can you see the chat box, Ahmed? No. Ahmed! Yes, I am. don't see. You don't see anything? I don't understand. Uh, anything, don't see. I am see for you in picture. In picture, in books. But, okay, do you know yeah. what chat is? Chat. Uh, chat, yes, I am. Can you open chat? I am see now chat. Do you see what I wrote? One minute. I am right now. You see my? Yes, I see. Uh, you you are see. you are in the class, not in join class. You uh, have to go to Colingo chat. Colingo chat, yeah. Don't they train you guys before you come to class? I thought that they trained you on how to use this. Hamid, uh, I shared the link of the communication. Can you please enter that page? Okay. I am Kabi. Okay, oh. let me try to figure out what's happening here. Do they train you guys before you come in here? Don't they show you how to use this? No, actually, I don't. I used to try it once when it was free, so I know how it works. I thought when they started charging that they gave you guys instruction and that they showed you how to use it. That's what they told me, that they were showing you how to use it. Okay, so Ahmad... Yes. Uh, on the left hand side of your screen, do you see chat? I am don't see anything, uh, my teacher. Do you I see a sure. button? There are some buttons. There are some graphics. What do you see? Oh my God! This I am classes classes uh, chat. There's nothing that says class chat. There's something that says chat, then screen share, and if you keep looking, you see Colingo chat. Colingo chat. I am search now. Please click on Colingo chat. Oh. Because I don't know how to include you in the class if you can't see me, you can't see my screen, and you can't see chat. So I'm not sure how to include you. 
Okay, uh, I have to go on, uh, Ahmed. I, I have to move on. Mert, why don't you um, read the text that's in the chat box, please? Okay, one minute. I'm opening it. To create a beautiful environment and an oasis of peace in a chaotic world where people from all walks of life can come together to practice yoga, meditation, and get in touch with their true divine self. Okay, why don't you try reading a little slower and okay. really moving your mouth. Read after me, okay? Okay. To create. To create. You see there are two vowel sounds together. You have E and then A. Mm -hmm. In order to get both of them out, you have to use air. Create. 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 To create. To create. To create. A beautiful. A beautiful. Environment. Environment. And an. And an. Oasis. Oasis. Let me show you something. Okay. Do you see the word create? Yes. Okay, under that I showed you that it has two syllables. Yeah. You have the vowel E and then you have the vowel A. It's difficult to pronounce two vowels together. So we connect We connect two vowels with a Y or a W. So, we don't say create. We say create. We put a small Y in there. Create. Yeah. What? Keep your, uh, create. Create. The Y and the W are in parentheses because it's not really create or mm -hmm. oasis, it's mm -hmm. more subtle, it's a lot softer. So it's, what is Talk all me. the sound? There's a lot of sound. There's a lot because of sound. Of me? I'm not sure. I just I hear like, I hear, I hear all of this sound. I'm, I'm muting, please tell me if it's from me, okay? Uh-huh. Well, it stopped. I think it might have been you. So don't touch your microphone. Okay. Create. Create. Mm hmm. What? Create. No, okay, sorry, sorry. For uh, create. Yeah, but I'm trying to get you to do it with a softer Y. You don't use a real Y, it's okay. very, very soft. Okay. Create. 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 Okay. You guys need to come to pronunciation classes before you come to reading classes. Okay, I'll just, so let me just Okay. So come to pronunciation classes and then come to reading classes and it will be easier for you. Okay, do this please. Just read that please. Read it again. Read it more slowly. To create a beautiful environment and an oasis of peace in a chaotic world where people from all walks of life can come together to practice yoga, meditation, and get in touch with their true divine self. Uh huh. Ooh. Do that for me. Yeah. Ooh. So you speak Arabic, right? No, no, I'm sorry, Turkish. You yes, speak Turkish. Turkish. Okay, the Turkish language is similar to Arabic because mm -hmm. you do use your throat a lot. Yeah. Are you here to practice in, like reading, like just reading, or do you want to work on pronunciation? Like what would your focus be? Are you interested in just reading or do you want to improve your pronunciation? 
From this class or from Kalingo? This class. Uh, actually, everything. I, I'm I'm not uh, focused on any, uh, something. I just want to improve my English in all cases. How do you feel when you are speaking? Uh, a little bit stressed. My Why? reading is much much more much more better because I can read too much uh, books and PDFs and also I watch uh, movies in English without subtitle. But um, I think I'm little stressed when, while I was talking and I sh think I should improve it by practicing in Colingo. What are you stressed about? Actually, what makes you feel stressed? Uh, I think I am a little bit uh, worried to find the correct words while I'm talking and uh, I think my uh, vocabulary should be much more, much more better uh, because you, I you couldn't find it. I could, I you couldn't find the one second, word. please. Sorry, sorry. You can't say much more better. That's incorrect. I want mm -hmm. to help you because I heard you say it maybe three times. Okay, you need to sorry. say much better. Okay, sorry. That is correct. Okay. That, that's why I'm here, actually. Okay, so you want to, you're really here to focus more on grammar and vocabulary building and practicing mm -hmm. your English and not so much. Um, the way that you're speaking. Yeah. Okay. Well, what you should know about my classes is that I really focus on pronunciation. So mm -hmm. you see reading in parentheses, mm -hmm. but it's a pronunciation class. Mm -hmm. so, so it's really more about pronunciation. And the reading is there to help students who have been working on their vowels, their consonants, their airflow, their openness, and those sorts of things. Then they come here and read because they have been focusing on their their sounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, this class is not really just about reading, just to hear yourself read. Mm -hmm. I really work more on accent reduction and eventually accent removal, removing mm -hmm. the accent altogether. Mm -hmm. That's my specialty. And mm -hmm. so you don't see me teaching anything else except pronunciation. Mm -hmm. I don't teach any other classes, so that's okay. that's why I'm here is to to help you with your spoken mm -hmm. expressions. Okay. Okay. Ahmed. Yes. Uh, is it working better now? Yeah, I am see this in chat, but uh, I am don't see for uh, for you. You still I don't see now, me. Yeah, I am see chat now. I can see chat. Okay, what do you see in chat? I am seeing... Uh, now I am right. You yes. see my right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very but good. But I want link... Uh, I hear. I, I want in link, I want see for you. Well, I can't change anything. My camera is open. Everyone else can see me. Um, how, I, how? I am you should be able to see me. I think it is because of your connection. Do you have a problem with your connection? No. I don't know why you can't see me. Um, I am here in uh, first. Okay, one second. Mert, how many fingers am I holding up? Three. You see, he can see me, Ahmed. I mean, Ahmad, I'm sorry. He can see no. me. No. I am, I am seeing picture. All I understand picture. you're seeing pictures, but I see me and he sees me. So there has to be something happening. You really need to write support at colingo.com. Please contact the company and tell them you are having technical problems and they should help you. I can't help you because I don't know what's wrong. Please contact Colingo and they can help you, okay? Colingo, what? Uh, where Colingo, where? I am sorry, don't Do you listen. See? Do you see in chat? No. Yeah, I am see chat, yes. Oh, okay. Support in uh, Colingo, okay. 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 Okay, guys, I've been talking for hours and I'm losing my voice, so. 
Oh, God. it's okay. I'm I'm going. I'm losing my voice. I'm trying to like not say the same things over and over. So please contact Colingo so that they can help you with this issue. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Is there anything I can help you with, um, Mirt? I understand that you are here for different reasons than than what I teach, but is there anything that I can help you with quickly before class ends? Thank you so much. What was that? Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, Afwan, you're welcome. Okay, okay. You're welcome. Uh, when, when, uh, sorry, sorry. My, uh, what should I call you? Miracle or teacher? I don't know. I'm no. so new. Miracle is fine. Okay. Um, in our culture in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, it's very common to just call the person by their first name. Okay. Um, if they have a doctorate degree, then mm -hmm. usually you would say doctor and their mm -hmm. last name. Okay. But okay. usually in this kind of environment, you just call people by their first name. Mm -hmm. If you're studying at a university, mm -hmm. you would probably use the title professor. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is very informal, so you can just call anyone here by their first name. Mm -hmm. Anyone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, when do you think I should attend your classes? Uh, when should I? I will get much more uh, think from your lessons. It, After pronunciation. That's why I was asking what you wanted. If mm -hmm. you want to speak more clearly, then mm -hmm. you definitely need the um, vowels classes. Mm -hmm. If you want to speak more clearly, but you're not saying you want to speak clearly. You're saying that you want better vocabulary and that you want better grammar. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you want to speak more clearly and reduce your accent, you need to start with vowels. Okay. Because, let me show you my screen. And I'm going to put the uh, link in for you, Ahmad. Yes. Let me put the link in for you, if you can click on that link. Okay, guys, so here's the reason why pronunciation is so important. Most people who are studying English only know these sounds. A, E, I, O, U. Most people studying English might know ah, and most people studying English might know oo, but they do not know ah, e, e, ah, Oh, oi, ow, er, ar, or, air. There are 19 vowel sounds. More than likely, um, Mert, you probably know seven of them. Mm -hmm. That means there are 12 more that you likely do not know. So when you speak English, you are using seven sounds, vowel sounds, instead of 19. That means your English is not going to be clear. That means when you listen, you will be expecting someone to say E, but they say E. So the person might say sit, but you, you hear seat. Those are two different words. Um, you might hear the person says, I bit the apple. And you think it should be, I beat. Well, beat is this or this. So when you have, um, when you don't understand the sounds of the language, you're not able to really communicate effectively. So that's why we focus so much on pronunciation. It's so that you can learn all the sounds that we use and you can learn how to say them. So here, most people who speak Arabic would say this sentence like this, the cat is in the hat. That probably sounds quite familiar to you. The cat is in the hat. English would be, like clearer English would be, 
the cat is in the hat. Well, how do you get this round sound? And how do you go from the get is in the head? A, 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 to A, A, A. That's just one example. But there are many of them. If you want to speak more clearly, you need the, the vowel classes. Does that okay. help? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Sure, you're welcome. Ahmad, do you have any questions? No. Okay, Thank guys. You. I am uh, see my see what's my problem. Why don't see after day? Maybe I am uh, tomorrow. I am for uh, can you speak? So you need to write Colingo, and they can help you. A teacher cannot help you because we do not understand how the service works. We only come here to teach the class. So please write Colingo, and I have to go, guys. I'm late. So I will be back in okay. one hour for some other classes. It was nice to meet you both. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.